big data analysis, right? So I and my team were actually thinking of the best way to um, make things easier for everyone. And um, we came up with a lot of um, stuffs which would probably be released, um, let's say, uh, maybe beginning of February, the first week or second week of February, and would help and guide you guys throughout the year. But trust me, 2023 promises to be a lot, but it only promises to be a lot if you actually do what needs to be done, right? Because for every action, there's an opposite reaction, but there needs to be, there needs to be an action first. An action needs to be taken first before there can be an opposite reaction. So, um, I would be, trust me, getting your skills as a data analyst is, um, is very important. It's like um, a very important stuff. But there are some things that actually beats these skills you're getting. And it's called character. It's called character because, um, sorry, I love, <laughs> I love uh, morals a lot. I love morals a lot. Because you can have the best skills in the world, but nobody would actually employ you if you don't have integrity or if you don't have character. So there are some things I always um, tell people, the people that were in my past, um, I think just 10 people that were in my past mentorship, I always tell them that hold character on your right hand, then hold your skills on your left hand. Why I'm saying hold your character on your right hand because character is actually very important and the skills you're getting. I've seen people without the required skills for data analysis or data science that are leading things. Okay, I have one in South Africa. Her name is Zinsley. She um was my supervisor when I was um in Explore AI. She was my supervisor, was my supervisor because I had to change things. So um, she definitely doesn't know how to code. When I found out she doesn't know how to code, I was really pissed off. But I began asking myself some questions. So she does not know how to code. She doesn't even know how to use Power BI. But I got to study her a lot and I realized that she has character. She has soft skills. There are some soft skills she has that actually beats the hard skills that she does not have. It complements the hard skills that she does not have. I'm not saying hard skills are not good, but there are some soft skills that actually takes you to the top faster than learning how to code in, you can write very nice code in 10 minutes. No, at the end of the day, nobody is important, but nobody cares about that if you're a bad person or if you don't have character to complement whatever it is you know how to do. So I found out that she, has character and this thing like um took her to the top in less than seven months in explore ai took her to the top in less than seven months right there are some people that has been they, they've been there all along or longer than she has been but her character and her soft skills like skyrocketed her to the top in a very short amount of time and that is what i'm pressing on today soft skills you need to excel in 2022. There are some little soft skills you need. And um, without mentioning, without wasting our time, because I want us to, um, we don't have to go into technicalities today, but I actually want us to be done in, um, done with this in a very short amount of time. Okay, so the first thing I would say you should um, put in as a person, is growth. You have to choose growth. Okay, so the first thing is choose growth. Why I'm saying choose growth is because um, you, if you're looking to make progress, you should be growing. No matter how slow or how fast it is you're growing, you just need to be moving forward. If you are crawling, please crawl. It's very good. If you are walking, please walk. 
if you're running, please run. But whatever it is you're doing, just make sure that you are moving forward in one way or the other. So your forward movement might be every month you make 1% progress. If you make 1% progress every month, at the end of the year, you've grown by 12%, which is something. If you're making 0% progress, if you're not making any progress at all, at the end of the year, <laughs> 0 plus 0 plus 0 compounds to 0. At the end of the year, you've not made any progress. So 1% progress every month is 12% progress at the end of the year. 1% progress every week is 52% at the end of the year. And 1% progress every day is 365% progress at the end of the year. Trust me, just make progress. Whatever it is, just make progress. If you're learning one topic every week in SQL or Python or Power BI or Excel, please learn that one topic every week. Stick to it. You are growing. Don't look at what your friend is doing. I mean, you need to look at what your friend is doing, make some comparisons and see where you're lacking. But don't compare someone else's progress to your own progress. Right. Um, which what example will I give? Okay, there was a man I saw on LinkedIn. He became a doctor at 59 years. When he was 59 years old, he became a doctor. Throughout his life, I think he has been um a mecha uh, mechanical engineer or something or mechanic. But 59 years, he became a doctor. At the age of 65 or so, he um, won a Nobel Prize for something, something he did. I can't even remember the name. But there are some people that they've been doctors for maybe 50 years. Okay, they, they, they became doctors when they were 20 years. But these people have been doctors a long time before the guy even started. They've not won anything. They've not been recognized for anything. So what if that guy that became a doctor at the age of 59, what if he um decided to compare himself or say okay maybe i'm 59 years i shouldn't be doing anything i shouldn't try or i'm 45 i shouldn't try to become a doctor i mean nobody would even recognize him but he chose to take it one step at a time because to be a doctor is no is no child is no man it's like it's not a small business it's not a small play so he chose he read probably studied a lot more than um, more than other people because he had a lot to make up for right so he became a doctor at the age of 59. I'm going to use myself as an example. I started when I was starting data or going into tech, right? I was really discouraged because um, I heard that people that do well in tech started at the age of, at a very young age, at the age of maybe 18, 20. But me, I was not starting. I did not even start when I was 25. So I I was like, trust me, I was feeling depressed. Um, many of you that follow me on Instagram, I made a post on LinkedIn. I made a post about how dark you know it was for me when I was starting data science, and I was feeling depressed because I had a lot to make up for, and it was telling on my mood. I was always pissed. I was always angry. I was always down per se, but. I began to understand that 1% growth every day is growth. I don't need to skyrocket to 10% growth every day. If you can do 10%, fine. You are odogu, as they call it. But um, 1% growth every day, trust me, is, is growth. And I stuck to that. I studied four hours every day. Okay, I actually studied eight hours every day. So four hours for reading, four hours for practice, because I knew that People that were into the field have been there a long time. These guys are doing so well. Like they could quote codes for you just by you know you talking to them and asking them about it. I knew I had a lot to make up for. Like I needed to close a lot of gaps, but I knew it had I have to start from somewhere. So whatever it is I was doing, I stopped whatever it is I was doing. I gave myself eight hours every day for three months, actually for one month, let me see how it goes. And I stopped that and I made massive progress. I was not really 
an expert, as you might say, but I think I was 10% better than a beginner. I was still a beginner, but my own beginner level is not um, someone that does not know anything, at least someone that knows something, but is a beginner. I kept on with that for, I think, one year, and I saw massive progress. I was never, I could not see the progress in person, but people were telling me, wow, 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 please show me this, please do this. Even the people that were so good, because of I was able to stick my head in the mud and learn basic concepts, people that were so good were actually wanting me to explain the basic concepts that maybe they missed or something I, I understand better than they do. That's because of 1% progress every day. So if you're going to use or uh, make use of the um, quotes of 2023 being a very good year or a year of speed, trust me, you need one, you need to grow every day. If it's not every day, choose every week. If it's not every week, choose every month, but make sure that whatever it is you're doing, you're making progress because trust me, you don't want to remain the same. Time does not wait for anyone. And before you know it, we are in February 14th. Everybody will start doing Valentine's Day. After February 14th, we are Easter week. Before you know it, is election has passed. We've moved to the first, first six months of the year has gone. Before you know it, we're up to the fourth quarter. Before you know it, the end of the year. And everybody will start being like, oh, I did not achieve anything. But you had 365 days to make at least a very, very, very tiny progress. Okay. So the first thing I would say is choose growth. Choose growth. And the second thing I'm going to mention is um, have a plan to grow. So you need to have a plan to grow. So if you're choosing growth, that's fine. That's really, really fine. Um, you want to grow. Everybody loves that. They will praise you for choosing to grow. The first one week is actually the most interesting because you are filled with massive amount of adrenaline. You want to grow. You're reading. You're doing this. It's very nice. We all love that. But what happens after one month when the motivation is gone? What will you do? For those that were in my, men in my mentorship um, group, I told them about um, when I was trying to work out, when I was working out and all that. Uh, when I started, I was so lean and the motivation finished after one month. But what kept me to keep working out was because I had a plan. There was a plan to grow, to reach that goal that even though I'm not that big, but at least I'm not as lanky as I was when I started, and I'm very happy. So have a plan to grow. So if you want to make um, massive growth at the end of the year, how do you want to go about it? Okay, do you want to um, do you want to take a course? Do you want to take a certification? Do you want to do projects? Let's assume you want to do your project. You want to do, let's say one project every month, 12 projects at the end of the year, right? How do you want to go about this project? Do you, um, so if you have a plan to grow, um, there's what we call the SMART um, principle. I'm going to write this here, SMART principle. So which means that you're, you, you must have, um, I've forgotten how it's called, what are the meaning of these things, but, um, there's a smart way of actually writing your goals. So number two is have a plan to grow. It simply means have a goal. There's a target of what you're doing. Have a goal. So let's assume you want to be a very good data analyst at the end of the year. In 12 months, December is still far. A very good plan, very good goal. The question is, how do you want to get there? What do you do to take you there? You want to go to... You want to travel to, let's say, Abuja. What are you going to do to get to Abuja? You don't just say, I want to travel to Abuja and you appear in Abuja. Ha <laughs> ha, it's not going to work. So what do you do to get to Abuja? How do you get to Abuja? Let's say maybe you have to, the first step you have to do is decide where you're going, right? Then the second thing is, um, 
what bus or which bus or which flight? Let's assume you're taking a bus. Or you're, okay, let's say flight. I don't like buses. Let's say flight. You want to take a flight to Abuja. Then that's good. You know you're taking a flight. The third question is, which flight are you going to use? How much do you want to spend on these flights? Um, is your what's your budget? Is your budget 100k? Is your budget 80k? If it's 100k, you have to now look for flights that have their price range between on zero to 100, right? Then you found maybe you found like three flights. You're not like, okay, which one of them is known for are people always using? Let's just say it's um airpiece. You choose airpiece. And you'll be like, what date do I want to go? So after every step, when you answer one question, it brings up another question because you don't just end there. So what step do I want to take? Um, okay, if it's when do I want to go? Am I going in the morning? What time am I choosing to fly? Let's say you chose eight o'clock. You know you're traveling by eight. You're staying in Lagos. Definitely, the traffic is mad. So if you want to go to the airport, you have to leave by six or by 6.30. So you are going to get your Uber or maybe book an Uber a day before and tell the Uber guy that, see, you are coming to pick me in the morning by 6.30. I don't want to book again. Just come by 6.30. This is my address. Then you go to the airport and that is how you get to Abuja. So when you get to Abuja, you'll not be like, okay, I booked my, my hotel. Where do I stay? Am I staying in a friend's place? And all that. So you need to actually make arrangements for each day or each week. Um, so I can't remember what the S is for, but um, having a smart goal, I'm going to start from M. I can't remember what the S is for. Maybe it's um, short or something. But starting from M is the most important for me. Whenever you are making a plan, make sure that the plan is measurable. By being measurable, you need to um, you need to be able to know when you're making progress or when you're not making progress. All right. So if you are, um, let's say you are setting a goal. Let's say you're setting a goal and to be a very good data analyst. How do you know you're actually being a very good data analyst? Okay, S is for specific. I think I just got that now. S is for specific. Thank you, Oliver Johnson. S is for specific. So you want to become a data analyst. That is what you want. Not... Um, I want to be able to write SQL code. No, 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 no. That has been a specific goal. You want to be a very good data analyst. Now, you know that to be a very good data analyst, you are, you need to learn SQL. You need to learn maybe Python. You need to have a good knowledge of Excel. You need to know how to use visualization, visualization tools like um, Power BI or Tableau, right? Now, that is a very specific goal. Now, the question is, how do you achieve this goal? How do you know you are meeting these goals you set for yourself? The first thing you need to know is your goals need to be measurable. You need to be able to know if you're making progress. Example is you want to be a data analyst. That's a very specific goal. Nice one. Codos, right? Everybody are going to like your posts on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Then the second thing is to become a data analyst, you need to... Uh, you need to have those skills, SQL, Excel, Power BI, or Tableau. Now, how often do you want to practice these skills? That means you need to, let's say, at the end of the week, how much progress have you made? That is being measurable. You are measuring your progress at the end of the week or at the end of two weeks. You are measuring your progress. And maybe you studied for... If you calculate the number of hours you studied in a week or in a month, it's uh, maybe, if, let's say, eight hours every week you are, or seven hours every week. You are doing 1.5 hours every day, right? So um, you studied for seven hours every week, seven times four, that's 20, uh, 28 hours every month. That is being measurable. Then at the end of the week, studying eight hours every week, you know that studying seven hours every week, sorry, you know that you need to make assessments. How how much progress have I made by studying these seven hours? Is this seven hours enough? Is it too small? Is it too large? What do I do? If it's too small, then you know you need to 
if it's not giving you the, the results you want, then you know you need to increase the number of hours because you're not making enough progress as you want to. That is measurable. You are able to measure the kind of progress you're making. Okay, so your goals needs to be, your plan or your goals needs to be measurable. And then the second one is achievable. Um, I love hitting on this because this one is very annoying. You are starting off in data analysis and you are saying in one year, I want to be the best data analyst in Nigeria. I beg, how far? It's not going to work. <laughs> you can't be the best data analyst in Nigeria in one month, in one year, in two years, in three years. You can't be. Because being the best data analyst in maybe Nigeria takes a lot of experience and you need like to even move to the senior data analyst position. You need to have at least, let's say, eight years of experience or five years of experience. So being the best data analyst in Nigeria in one year is not an achievable goal. Because when you find out that you're not making, you're looking at people on LinkedIn, the kind of dashboards they are doing, the kind of explanations they are giving, or maybe you start comparing yourself with me, you start feeling bad because you are not meeting to my level. You're not actually getting near or closer to me. You start feeling bad. It's not an achievable goal, all right? The target you could do is, okay, at the end of this year, I should have a job as a junior data analyst. That is a very achievable goal because starting off your career in data analysis, they will take you in as a junior data analyst or probably as a data analyst intern, as an intern for data analysis. So that's a very achievable goal, right? So the next question you want to ask yourself is, okay, um, since you already know that is your goal is achievable, it's specific, then you can now use the measure, um, make sure it's measurable. So having a plan for each week, how you can track your progress. So your plan has to be achievable. Don't go and set something that is too much for you and you start feeling bad or discouraged when you're not able to meet that particular goal. So your goal actually has to be, the next one is R, it has to be relevant. Um, how do I, I'm thinking of how to explain this. Your goal has to be relevant. Okay, I would say you are planning on, at the end of the day, you want to become a good data analyst, a data analyst, and the plan you're setting is taking you towards being a social media person, or maybe it's taking you towards being a human resource manager. It's, it's not relevant to what you're trying to do. It's not actually relevant to what you're trying to do. So um, you need to think about why are you setting the goal you're setting? Is it to get somewhere? Where are you heading? What is the reason why? So this one I'll just say is the question, it answers the question why. Why you're setting that particular goal. Okay, if it's to um, become a data analyst, then you should not be mending yourself with things that pushes someone to become a medical doctor it makes no sense if it's to um get money or live a comfortable life then you shouldn't actually be wasting things your time on things that makes you not to live a comfortable life right so that's relevant your goals needs to be relevant then um the last one is your goals also needs to be time bound it needs to be time bound so if you're setting a goal to become a data analyst and or you just say, I want to become a data analyst, there is no time, it's not time specific. Guess what? You are going to relax. You're going to chill. You'll be like, oh, six months have passed. Don't worry, I still have time. I have next year. I can achieve this thing in next year. What do you do? You would relax and you watch another six months run by you. And at the end of the six months, you'll be like, oh, one year you don't pass. So wow, I've not actually achieve then it's be like don't worry there's next year I'll, I'll carry this stuff over to next year i'll i'll shift it over to next year so your goal is not time bound it's making you procrastinate but if you say i want to become a data analyst by at the end of this year which means by december 31st i should have done 12 projects i should have um 
um, optimize my CV, optimize my LinkedIn profile, and I should have a position as a data analyst in 10. That is a time-bound goal. It is time-specific. Then you now start applying the um, specific principle. You start applying the measurable, start applying it to, since it's achievable. Then you start, since it's relevant also, you, start now, you now start using every single day to meet up to this goal. Every single day to meet up to this goal. You have um, your measuring statistics at the end of every week. You have your measuring statistics at the end of every at the end of every month. So if you are doing a project every month, you'll be like, this week, I'm going to use this week to understand, to do my research, understand the um, problem statement of this project. Next week, I'm going to do data cleaning. The next week, I'm going to do my visualization. Then the last week, I'm going to now do my recommendations and put this on my portfolio. That is a standard way of doing a project, one month project. You break your task down to every week so that at the end of every week, you'll be like, okay, was I able to achieve this? If not, you take it over to the next week. You know, it's time bound. Everything you're doing is time bound. All right. So that is actually have how to have a plan to grow. You need to have a plan to grow. Um, so that one is just number two. Everything I just said now is number two. So number two is um extensive because. It's take, having a plan to grow, grow is not just um, knowing where you want to get to, but knowing how to get to where you want to get to, all right? So number three, the third thing I would say is um, projects. Projects. So the um, number one stuff for a data analyst is having projects. Whether, I don't know collaborative projects, single projects, whatever it is, have projects. Because trust me, nobody cares about the number of certifications you have until you've done projects that reflect those certifications. Okay, you are a doctor and I mean, you graduated from the University of Ibadan. I don't know if it's a leaf or University of Ibadan or maybe OAU or maybe Namdi Azikiwe University, very good universities. These universities are wonderful. And you graduated as a doctor first class. Very good, awesome. But now you did not go to medical school. Nobody can know if you've done your housemanship. You don't have anything to prove that you've done housemanship. You don't have anything to prove that you went to medical school. I'm sorry to say, but nobody will hire you because they don't want to give your kid um, someone's kidney to you and you use knife and fork to dissect it anyhow you want. So projects actually proves that you have those skills. That is why my for this um community created my aim is not having certifications are good, but my aim particularly is um the projects, work on projects. We're going to work on projects together. That is the aim. Because it's very important, it's more important than a certification. Trust me, it's more important than certificate. If you have one certificate on your um on your profile or on your LinkedIn stuff, and you're starting data analysis, trust me, it's if you have one certification and you have 12 projects, those 12 projects beat the certification. Let me even bust your head. If you have 12 12, 12 projects and you have zero certifications, you can be hired as a data analyst because nobody cares about your certification. It's good. It's, I'm not saying it's not important. It's important because, I mean, it shows that you learned or you bent your head to learn something, right? But at the end of the day, your projects are very important. You need projects. So if you're learning SQL, you need projects to show that you learned SQL. So that's why in the COVID-19 projects, I divided it. Sorry, I'll take questions soon, okay? I divided it into different skills, Excel, um, Excel, SQL, Power BI, so that when you're telling someone that you know how to use SQL, the person will be like, show me. You tell the person, look at my COVID-19 project. The person sees your SQL code and you understand it. You can explain it to the person. One, that shows you how to use SQL. 
Person sees your Power BI dashboard, shows you now to use Power BI. Person sees your data cleaning with Excel, shows you now to use Excel. Three of them in one project, trust me, that's a plus for you. So that's why my target for this group is doing projects. It's very, very important. Your project speaks for you. Okay, whether you have them in a portfolio website or you have them in a um, video summary, just like what I did for the COVID-19, that project is not even in my portfolio. It just, my LinkedIn is a portfolio, like a very good portfolio for me. So it's like, um, I have a video summary for you. You can do a video summary for your projects. Explain to people in 10 minutes, five minutes, take them through your project from start to finish. I was talking to someone yesterday or the day before yesterday. Explain to people about your projects in a video summary. Okay, it's it helps yourself. It's even better because they can see you moving around your dashboard and explaining. 10 minutes, you're able to explain what you did in two weeks. Trust me, that's a soft skill communication. So having projects speaks for you than having certifications. I'm not saying certifications are not good though. Before someone will say, I said certifications are not good. They are very good, but projects are better than certifications. Okay, so before I go to number four, I'm going to take um questions from, if you have questions, just raise up your hand. I thought someone's hands was, was up. So if you have a question, please ask me your question before I move to number four. Does anyone have a question? Okay, so if no one has a question, I'm going to move. Okay, we have um S for specific, we have M for um measurable, which means your goal needs to be measurable. Like you need to actually know when you're making progress. Then we have A for achievable. So it needs to be something that is mentally, you need to be able to be at, achieve it in your mind. That means you don't have doubt in your heart. heart. Having doubt in your head is not a problem, guys. Trust me. If you have doubt in your head about doing something, go ahead and do it. It's normal to have doubt in the head. Okay? It's very normal to have doubt in the head. So if you have doubt in your head, no wala, that's fine. Nobody is going to what when you have doubt in your head, it doesn't stop um whatever it is you want to do from happening. But when you have doubt in your heart, trust me, it stops everything from happening. It stops everything from happening. So having doubt in your heart is not a problem. Having doubt in your head is not a problem. But the problem is having doubt in your heart. So if whatever you're doing is achievable in your heart, you've been able to achieve that stuff in your mind or in your heart and connect it to your mind, it's achievable. What it means is that that goal is achievable. But once you start having um, doubt in your head, it's not a problem. Just go ahead and do it. All right. So um, someone's hand is up. Uh, I thought someone's hand was up. Guys, I'm always putting your hand down first. So if you have a question, please go ahead or you can type it on the chat box. I'll see it. So Francis, I hope I've been able to answer your question um, on that. Okay. So does anyone have a question again? Any other question, guys? Any other question? Please, I want you guys to answer your question because um, I it's, it's not just um, having your skills. I know every guys are actually hyped about having these skills as a data analyst and doing that and doing this, but there are some little stops you need. Okay, there are some little stops you need. So um, 
if you have a question, please um put your hands up or I will just go on. I will just go on. Okay, S is specific. So your goal needs to be specific. So you don't just say, I want to go out. I mean, if you're going out, you know you should have where you're going to. You're leaving your house. You're coming to the road. If anybody say, please come with me to this place, you go with them because you don't have a specific place you're going to. And it will make you tired and probably make the person frustrated. So your goals need to be specific. Yeah, so, um, okay, so number four, um, this is where we now go to certifications. Certifications, okay. So, um, like I said, pro certifications are good, but projects beat certifications hand hands down. So if you want to be a data analyst, you should have, okay, how many certifications do I want to take this year? So your certifications and your project should be ratio of one to four. So for every one certification you're taking, please do four projects. Okay, so it will slow you down a little and you do more projects. Do more projects. So maybe you could say, I'm taking two certifications this year, paid or unpaid, whatever it is you want to do. And but I'll advise you go for um first go for unpaid certifications because test your grits with unpaid certifications. Test how far you can go. Because I trust me, I was on a call with a lot of people yesterday. And because I got back yesterday, so I was able to open my laptop and I was on a call with so many people and told me that they paid for this certification, paid for this certification, they abandoned it, discouraged them. And I, I looked at it, I'm like, it's not actually anyone's fault. It's not even the person's fault. It's knowledge on how to go about these things. Try your um, grids with unpaid certifications. Do it for one week. Stick with it for one week. You might not finish it, but make sure that you stop with it for one week. If you can stick with it for one week, hmm, you can do any other thing for one month. Okay, stick with it for one week. You can do any other thing for one month. Pay certifications are good, are actually better than unpaid because they make you commit. But if you are doing a paid certification, please be doing an unpaid certification too. It will help you. There are many unpaid certifications out there. All right. Okay, Bumi, you can go ahead and ask your question. Okay, when you say uh, start with unpaid certification, so I, I mean, I know you mean things like maybe that SQL, um, W three school, you know, solo yeah. line and all those kind of things. So, um, what's what at the end of the day, certifications are still certification. So, what's the how does it what's the difference between working with the as in starting with unpaid and actually paid? Because um, at the end of the day, if you did a paid one, you know that okay, you have a goal and you you don't, you don't even want to waste your money. Okay, so it makes you more serious about it. Than that. If you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, why I said on pay start with on pay certification is because trust me, pay certification makes you learn. Okay, Bumi, do you have any other question again? Sorry, it was a mistake, so I'm, okay. I'm, I'm my head. Okay, Francis, I will get to your question soon after this. So um example, data camp, right? Data camp is a paid certification. So to get that certification, data scientists with in with Python or with SQL or with Power BI in data camp, you need to pay for it. I think it's $59. Yeah, $59. That should be um 40,000 or 40 something K. So data camp offers gives you a good learning track to study. But when I have seen someone close friend of mine paid, in fact, not even, I've seen like more than three people. So I'm using sample population here. I've seen more than three people. They paid for data camp certifications and at the end of the day, they were not able to go through. I even had to use, when we started together, I had to use their own accounts. I could not get certification with their account because it won't show my name. 
So I had to use their own account to learn when I was starting off because then I was I was not sure if I could keep up with um pain and what if what what if I don't follow through? What if I don't follow through? What will happen to my money? I was that worried. Then, because I mean, 40k is, is not beans now. It's not like anybody is pushing me or there's a mentor there to guide me. So I, I needed to do these things myself, push myself. Then I used the account to learn and I finished it up. That was, to me, it was free. But to them, they paid for it now. But for me, now Osho free. So I finished it before they even did. What just pained me was that I could not earn that certificate, the data science, um, scientist or data, yeah, with Python. I could not earn it. So it was pain. That was the only pain I had. But it was a free stuff and I was able to finish it. So after finishing it, then I was now able to go ahead to pay over 5K dollars just to learn data scientists with a top school. Okay. So it's it pushed. I was like, okay, I have the grits to go ahead. So I then went ahead, pushed myself, and I paid um like a very huge amount of money. If you convert it to naira, a very huge amount of money to learn from top professionals, right? So that one tested my grits. But for some people, so you need to know the kind of person you are. But for some people, for some people. Having it just like um what you said for me, having a pay certificate might actually push you to learn faster because you don't want your money to waste. But if you are not sure if it will push you, just try on paid first and see how you can push yourself without money pushing you. You understand? See how you can push yourself. Then if you know you can push yourself to an extent, don't worry. When you pay for it, your money will push you by itself. Nobody will remind you to go to your course. When you remember you've paid something, something amount of money to study, you would study. So it depends on the kind of person you are. Me, for the kind of person I am and what I've seen from sample population, just test your grit with um, on pay certification and see how far you can push yourself. Then go for pay certifications. Okay, so... um. Yeah, it depends. So I hope I've been able to answer your question for me. Yes, you did. All right. So, okay, Um, Francis asked the question, what are the time frames we need to give ourselves when we have to take, when we have work that take care of us? Okay. Um, You don't have to study me. Then I was doing... Um, okay, before I go, went into data analysis, I was I had to drop my job with Jumia because I, I leave the house by come on, who leaves the house by six and get back by eleven? That was it was taking my life. I had to drop the work with Jumia. Okay, it was a good workplace, but and it's never like I was working on the island, I was working on the mainland Yaba, because they have they have their office in Yaba. So I was staying around first stack, going to Yaba every morning, coming back late in the night. So if I tell you I'm going to see you when I get back, I'm actually playing with you because I'm not going to see you when I get back. I'll get back by 11. Will I start leaving my house? Even if I have a call, if if I was dating you, you lady I was dating you, we can't even talk. Maybe one hour in a day, we will talk. And that is going to kill the relationship. So there are a lot of things I was looking at. So getting back by 11, I don't want to get on a call with anybody, no matter how much I love you, all right? So I needed to sleep because I have to wake up by four in the morning. So do some other things, maybe say my prayers, um, get my clothes ready and all that. Then by six, I'm off to work, coming back by 11, repeating the same routine. So I saw, okay, this was not really what I wanted. And... It was a good career, but I needed to end it. So I ended it and I went, I had a skill as um, a cinematographer. So I decided to just use my skill, you know, do cinematography work for people, people that want to make a short movie and all that and do this. People that are doing skits, I help them with their videos, put soundtrack, you know, make it look like a movie per se. 
Then while I was doing that, I was learning data analysis. So I could do my my cinematography stuff for maybe two, three hours. Then I learned for eight hours. So that's 11 hours of the day. I'm doing something. Then maybe I you know, read or study for maybe read other books. Whatever it is I want to read for maybe some hours. You know, that was how I was able to. That was how I was able to walk myself through that slowly. Okay, I did not just rush. So for you, it might be you have work that you need to do. You could say two hours in a day, right? There's don't worry, inside twenty four hours. If anybody wants to tell me that they don't have time, me, eh, I will not believe it. Because you have time. You just have time for what is more important for you. Not having time for everything. You don't need to have time for everything. If you call me today and tell me you want to hang out, between Monday and Wednesday, or between Monday to Thursday, I might not really give you an answer. Or I would most likely tell you, no, I can't hang out. But if you tell me you want to hang out on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I will consider it. I'm actually tell you yes, because during those time of the week, I can let go of some time or waste some time because I've been able to make up for it Monday to Thursday. So there are some things that I would tell you yes for. If it's something that pertains to you personally, maybe you need help personally, like something that is really important to you. It might not be important to me, but if it has to do with your person as a human being, I would reply and help you give you that time you need because at the end of the day the most important people are human beings the human being itself not what the human being is doing the human being itself so i might reply you and answer you but if it's to hang out things that won't add to you or to me in any way i will most likely tell you no so i make out time for things that are important so maybe you might want to employ that so if data analysis is important to you give one hour to it i mean the videos for our sessions are recorded you might, if it's the video is two hours, you can break it down. Every one hour in this time of the day, I'm going to list, um, watch one hour, um, just up to one hour of the video. Then maybe towards the night, I will now complete it one hour and practice as whatever it is you're doing in the video. Like that, you've studied or practiced for two hours. Then during the weekend or on Sunday, when we know that most people don't go to work, okay, you can then use four hours after you come back from church or whatever it is you're doing on a Sunday. You can use three hours, four hours to then practice, like really, really practice on those things. Trust me, you would make up for it. I've seen someone that works in a bank. The person became a data analyst. So it's 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 achievable. You just need to decide. You just a decision. Okay, so you have work, something you're doing. You have a job. Fine, that's really good. You can just use one, two hours in a day. Like when I was giving you the example of having a plan, remember I told you seven hours in a week, that's approximately 1.5 hours every day. Okay, so it's just depending on how you want to look at it. It could be five hours in a week, one hour every day, or one hour every day for seven days, depending on how you want to do it. But you can make out time at least one hour every day. One hour every day would take you far. Okay, why I'm saying one hour every day, I've seen it, it would take you far. It's seven hours every week. And seven hours is a lot of time, trust me. Because the standard work time for a human being is 40 hours. So seven hours, you're working for 40, 40 hours, you're studying for seven hours in a week, trust me. You're doing fine. You're doing awesome. So, yeah. Okay, so Francis, I've answered your question. And if you're studying that one hour every week or seven hours every week, in six months, you can still become a data analyst. It's not really, you can see because as you're doing, what makes you learn faster is the project you're doing. So that's why this group is designed. You're learning on your own. You're coming to practice with the project you're doing. Trust me, in six months, you can become a data analyst. It might not be extremely good, but you know how to use all those data analysis tools. Then the more you practice in one year, you can now become a good junior data analyst. That one, that's what works. Okay, so um, any other question? Any other question before I move to number five? Do we have a question? 
Does anyone have a question, guys? Okay, so if we don't have a question, then I'll go to number five. So number five is um uh, this is this one is quite important to me. I call it grit. Having grit because you need to decide that this is what you want to do. You need to decide that this is what you want to do. If you can't make that decision by yourself, in your head, in your heart, in your mind, when you see that um, maybe being a doctor is sweet, your friend is just seeing what they are doing at work. Man, I was removing this guy's kidney and I saw the vein that leads to the kidney. I just touched the vein like this. Man, the vein was just dancing. You'll be excited. Next thing you say, you want to become a doctor. It's trust me, I've had that experience before. So, but having in mind that this is what you want to do, I need to sacrifice maybe one hour every day for this particular thing. Trust me, if you have that decision, I have the grid that no matter what it takes, I'm going to do this every day. You might not make progress every day. Trust me, it's like that. It's normal. You might not make progress every day. Don't feel bad. The um. The, anal the trend line analysis for progress, sometimes you might not even make progress Monday to Thursday, but Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you, you just hit the roof. You spend three hours Friday, three hours Saturday, three hours Sunday, that is nine hours. What you could not even do, spending one hour Monday to Sunday. So every day might not be the same thing, but every day should compound to something. Okay, so... You've decided that this is what you want to do. I want to become a data analyst. Man, I'm going to become a data analyst, whether I like it or not. It will be hard sometimes. Trust me, it will be hard most times. But it gets hard when you're just starting off. But when you you are now sticking to it, you're sticking to what you want to do, what you said you're going to do, it becomes easy because you start breaking down some walls. You start breaking down some walls. Being persistent about something breaks down that particular wall okay so if for guys if you are um okay let me not say for guys let me just give an example if you are if you carry a sledgehammer and you are hitting it on a particular part just a one on one spot on a wall continually you keep hitting it on that spot you do it today the wall did not break you do it tomorrow the wall did not break but guess what you'll be seeing cracks on the wall it doesn't mean that it's not affecting the wall because it's not breaking. It's actually affecting it just that you still need to hit it a little bit more for that wall to break. So when you do it for one week, you find out that the wall finally breaks down. That is what having grit and being persistent does to something. You keep doing it. You keep doing it. Keep on doing it. At the end of the day, that thing that you feel like you can't understand becomes easy for you. Someone will call you up in the night around 3 a.m. and tell you, please explain this stuff for me. You break it down for the person. So, okay, let me give you an example. So, uh, I I went for, um, during the 6th of January, I went for a wedding. So, um, on that wedding, I was, in, I was in Anambra State. So, the wedding was, it would take my time because the person getting married is actually my sister. So, um, someone called me while I was in the middle of doing some stuff. And normally, I wouldn't even pick a call. I wouldn't pick the call. But because of the person that was calling, I needed to pick that call. The person asked me some questions on um, Python. And I was like, God, why, why now? But because of that particular problem, is something that I've done over and over and over and over and over again. I was able to explain it there for the person. It just took me five minutes to break it down for the person, to explain to the person what the person needs to do. And it's because of I've been able to do it. When I was starting to do it, when I was doing it for the first time, it was difficult. But I've been able to do it and do it and do it and do it and over, like over again. So I repeated it quite a number of times. I was able to explain it to the person. So that is what having grit does for me. Being persistent, learning something. 
when they wake you up in the morning, you will be able to explain it because you've spent time, you failed in that stuff quite a number of times. So learning it won't even be, or explaining to someone won't even be difficult for you. Okay, so um, the seventh, the sixth one I would like to talk about is um, having, uh, having accountability, okay? Having accountability is good to do something alone. It's good to do something alone. Trust me, it's good, but you would, um, if you go alone, you would go far. But if you go with people, um, what's the wonder word? If you go alone, you would go far. But if you go with people, you would, um. I can't remember the remaining thing, but let's just say you will go further. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is when you learn from people's experience, it cuts a lot of rope, like a lot of mistakes for, for you. The mistakes that you would have made and would take you a longer time to achieve that thing, learning from people or bending your head down with people that have done that stuff, and learning from their mistakes, asking them questions, actually cuts the rope for you. You're able to avoid some certain mistakes that you shouldn't even be making or that you should have made, All right? So having accountability, by accountability, I mean um, maybe you have, you know someone that is a data analyst, the person can explain some things from you. If you're confused, you have, you can ask the person some questions and the person breaks it down for you, makes you understand it better, and tells you what not to do. Tells you what to do. It saves you the time of doing try and error. Try and error is good, though. Try and error. Trust me, it's it's really good. But uh, uh, why do try and error when you can do try and pass, try and succeed? Try and error is good, but you might fail. You might not fail. What if you fail and fail and fail and fail and fail and keep on feeling like um, the man that invented electricity? You had to fail 99 times, have you? But that man's great is something else. Because me, the 10th time, I, I think I would have just stopped whatever it is I was going to try something else. So that's try and error. But now, people that are trying to do what that man did, they don't need to do try and error. They could learn from the man's mistakes, what the man did and what he did not do. Saves them that time. So that is what being accountable to someone or having a mentor or someone you're learning from does for you. Okay, it saves you that time. It saves you that time, trust me. Even though I learned with data camp and you know how to, I made a lot of mistakes, but having that mentor in South Africa, um, Nofundo, She's like a wonderful person. Avon, thank you. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Thank you very much, um, Badibu. If you want to go fast, you will go fast too. Go alone. You will actually go fast. But if you want to go far, far means you are not only going fast, you are going the distance. You are going, the journey is actually, you've gone a long way. Go together. Okay, so that's why I will encourage you guys in this group, this community, find one or two people, study partners, okay? It's good to learn from someone above you, but it's also good to learn from someone the same level with you. That's why you guys need to come together, collaborate. Um, I love what um, Adebimpe is doing. Adebimpe and um, someone, I, can, I think some other people, they, they actually study together, even though they are not in the same time zone. They study together. And I went, when she told me about it, I was like, man, this one knows what she's doing. This one knows, just, let me just give her time. She'll actually get where she's going to. Okay, so you need maybe two or three people. You guys are three in a group or four. Study together. But what you understand, what you don't understand, someone else understands it so well. And what you think you understand. Someone doesn't even understand it at all. So when you are able to share your ideas, you find out that you are learning it from different perspective, from another perspective entirely. Then what, if you guys don't now understand, you can now take it to the common, the mentor that you guys feel you have in common. Break it down for all of you. 
in in bits and pieces then you guys cannot and trust me two people cannot understand something the same way you guys will understand it but you can never understand it the same way it will be understood from different from a different perspective from maybe um let's say Bolaji understands it in understands that going to Ikeja airport you need to follow the Oroshoki expressway but maybe Margaret knows that going to Ikeja airport you need to follow Ajao Estate. But guess what? Both of you get to Ikeja Airport. But if Bolaji can be like, oh, Margaret, how did you get here so far? She'll be like, okay, I took Ajao Estate. Follow this road, follow this road, follow this road. They'll be like, oh, wow. I got to the airport, but I did not follow Ajao. I followed the Roshiki especially. She'll be like, ah, how is the road? You see, it's just a straight road. Then you take the bridge. But both of you got to Ikeja Airport, but different routes. You can now understand how you got there or learn a new way of getting there. So that's what, um, and you guys can be accountable to each other, but just that um, you guys actually need to learn from someone above you. So it's good to have someone above you, someone that is pouring water on you, and you need someone that you can pour water on, and you guys can pour water on yourselves, all right? The tap doesn't collect water from the sky. The tap collects water from the tank, and it pours it inside the bucket. But the tap is collecting water from somewhere. And that tank that is the almighty tank is still collecting water from somewhere. And where that thing is collecting water from, it's collecting water from somewhere. So there is, it's like a chain of distribution. It's always something is collecting something from somewhere. Me that you think I'm teaching you or you think I know data analysis, trust me, I'm learning from somewhere. I'm learning from someone. I have someone that teaches me or someone that is pouring water on my head. So that's what it does. I'm accountable to someone. I don't just do whatever I want to do. So I'm accountable to someone. So that's what accountability does for you. It saves you a lot of time. It saves you a lot of time. You need to, in the group, find someone that you can talk to. If you don't know someone you can talk to, please reach out to me. I will direct you to someone that I feel that you guys can learn together. Okay? Even though I'm there, but trust me, you need someone that... <laughs> You can learn from the same level with you, all right? So that's what having accountability system. And please, please, it might not be me, okay? Or let's tell people, it might not be me. I don't really know anything. I always say, I, me, I don't know anything. I'm a lodo. I'm a lodo. Big lodo. So if you feel that I know everything, me, I will say it here. Thank God that this video will be on YouTube so that the whole world will hear me say it. Please, I don't know anything. I'm learning. I'm always learning. I know something, though. not like I don't completely learn anything, but I know something, but I don't know everything. Okay. So if you feel like I can't be a mentor to you, fine. That's really good. Please reach out to someone that you feel can be a mentor to you, someone that can pour what on your head and guide you. It will save you a lot of try and error. Try and error is not, is not the ideal way to go. Okay, you might get there, but you might get there longer. So you might be stuck in traffic and someone that got direction from Google Map, the person gets there faster than you. All right. So um all right, so number seven. Um number seven for me is have coffee by your side. Yeah, sounds funny, right? Have coffee by your side. Um, it helps you study. That's just the brief summary. Having coffee helps you study better. Mm -hmm. Right now, as I'm talking to you, I'm taking coffee. Okay, it, it keeps me, it doesn't allow me to just rest or relax. So that caffeine just keeps me on my toes. And please don't take it, take it once a day or two times a day tops. Highest two times a day. When you know you have to do something that you don't want to relax, just take coffee. A cup of coffee is fine. Okay, don't... Caffeine is not really good for the system, but a certain amount of caffeine is good. Okay, but a large amount is not good. It would you know, make you feel anxious a lot of the time. But please, if you have work to do, you're working on a project, have coffee beside you. Okay, it keeps you on your toes. It keeps you going. All right, so that one is not even much. Just have copy, have copy by your side. You want to study all through the night, please take a cup of coffee or have a cup of coffee by your side. It helps you. It will help you. 
all right? Then the number eight is exercise. Please exercise. A strong body is a strong mind. You want to understand things faster. Exercise, do some exercise. And when in the morning, when you wake up, I know this is, you're thinking this is off course, but trust me, all these things are related to learning or sticking to whatever it is you want to do. Exercise, you don't need to lift weights. Please, if you cannot lift weights, leave weights. Just leave it. Leave those irons. Just go for a run. Go for a walk. Um, do jackknives or something. You can Google stuff, some exercises that helps with the mind. Okay. A strong body is a strong mind. That used to be my status on WhatsApp or, you know, a strong body is a strong mind because it has helped me. It was my status for like, I think, two years. A strong body is a strong mind. If you're exercising always, you would have a sharp mind. You'll be able to get things. Okay. You'll find out that you can stick to things. You don't have to give up on things because if you're able to stick to exercise for like a month, you can stick to anything. Because trust me, nobody wants stress on their body. Okay. But exercise helps you. It helps you achieve a lot. It helps you with your mind, helps you with um, your skin, helps you with, uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, it helps you with maybe your body per se. Yeah. It helps you with your body. You, you, you look fit. Your mind is fit. Your body is fit. You know, your communication style changes. The way you you have, you are now positive, more positive to things because it helps with your mood. You're more positive to the things you're doing. If you're going, if you're doing a project, you, are, you have a positive attitude towards that project. You're not just doing it because you have to do one project to become in data. No, you're now interested in the project. You're now interested. That's why the COVID-19, anybody that looks at the COVID-19 project looks at it as a data analysis project. But when I looked at it, I was seeing two different things. I saw it as a data analysis project and as a data science project. So that was why in the video, I dropped it as a phase one, but first the phase, the phase, the first phase of the project. So now I need to go back to the project and start doing predictions on how many people will be infected in Nigeria. How many people will die in this one? How many people are infected in this one? You know, I, I just looked at it a different way. So that's, and I gave that credit to exercise. Okay, exercise is, is, is a good way of sharpening your mind, right? So these are the eight ways you can make your 2023 better than 2022. So if there are some things you've been doing here, um, you were doing in 2022, this list I gave you, the eighth list, but some things you've been doing fine, but if you've not been doing it so well, please increase the tempo. And if there are some that you've not been doing, please do it. If there are some that you've been doing so well, kudos, wonderful, just pick the ones you've not been doing. And trust me, in six months, you will see very, 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 very good results. It doesn't feel... What people have done and achieved or gotten successful results, if you do the same thing, you'll get the same result. It's not, there's no two ways about it. So there's no two ways about it. So those are the eight things I talked about. So the first one is um, choosing growth, growing 1% every day. You know, just grow somehow. If you're crawling, please crawl. Just make a movement, do something. Okay, the second one is that growth now that you want to grow. What is your plan? You need to have a plan. Okay, have a plan for that growth. So, and I talked about the smart way of setting a goal. We have specific, we have measurable. Specific means it has, let your goal be specific. Don't just say, I want to go out. Where are you going to? Right. Then second one is measurable. You need... Your goal, your goal needs to be measurable. You need to know when you're making progress or not. Then the second one is achievable. It needs to be something that you can achieve. Let it be achievable in your mind, in your heart. Then it's achievable. So you might have doubt in your head, but that one is no problem. As long as you don't have doubt in your heart, it's achievable. Then the second one is relevant. Let it be relevant to whatever it is you want to do. Okay, then the last one is time bound. Please, if you want to be a data analyst, don't say, I just want to be a data analyst. How long do you want it to take you to be a data analyst? Is it 
by December 31st, 2023, you should be a data analyst. Fine. By June 30th, fine. Whatever it is, let it be time bound. All right. Then the second one I talked about is, okay, second one is how we plan to go. That was why I mentioned the smart ways of setting your goals. And the third one is your projects. Please do projects. Projects are important. That is what this group is primarily made for. Okay, you can have, you know, two people you're working on projects with together. You can choose your project from Cargo. There are different ways to get data sets. Cargo. So I'm trying to... Okay, so the next one is... um. What number am I in? So, okay, after certifications, the next one is grids. You need to be persistent to whatever it is you want to do. If you are going to, if you say you're doing something, please stick to it. Okay, it's sometimes it's good to slack. It's normal, I mean, normal to slack. Nobody's going to kill you for that. But um, nobody is at it 100%. I'm not even at it 100%. So, but just stick to it, stick to it. Then, Sixth one is having accountability. Like I said, look for two, one or two people you need to um, look for one or two people you can work with. And please have a mentor. It's good. It's, it saves you a lot of stress. The good it did to me was insane. So it saves you a lot of stress. It might not be me. For the people that are with me, this year will be something else. Because we are going to be putting our leg on the um to accelerate. We need to move fast this year. We need to achieve a lot. So and um for those that are not with me yet, if you want to be fine, you can reach out to me. But if you can't be with me, please look for someone, someone that you feel that can guide you. It will help you. Then um the next one is. Have okay, having coffee by your side. Coffee is good. If you're looking, if you want to get the name of the coffee I use, I use um Nescaf. Yeah, Nescaf. Yeah. So depends on the size you want to go for. So um say so I'm doing advert for these people. So number eight, exercise. Please do some exercise. It helps with your mind. A strong body is a strong mind. Strong body is a strong mind. It has never failed. A strong body is always a strong mind. All right. So um, that is where I'm going to start. So these people, okay. How can one learn programming codes faster? Okay. Um, SQL Python. For SQL, I recommend you go to, if you are in my mentorship group, you can learn that faster. For SQL, you can learn it faster because um, if you have questions, you can always ask me and I'll break it down for you. I'll use story and illustrations and break it down for you so that's because it's better to learn. It's quicker to learn when someone tells you a story. So, but if you're not, so Bello, uh, I think you are not. Yeah. If you're not, um, or if you are and you still want to add extra, use W3 schools, use YouTube. Okay, they will explain these things for you. I learned with YouTube. Even though I had a mentor, I was learning with YouTube. It's like adding these things together accelerated my learning, made it faster. So, and practice. The best way to learn is to practice. No matter how much mentorship you have, and you don't practice, nothing will happen. Yeah, so practice, 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 practice is the number one way to learn faster. Then um okay, so I'll just open it stuff for anybody that has a question, please. If you have a question, go ahead and ask your question. If you have a question, you can go ahead and ask your question. Okay, Ajibola, go ahead. Daniel, thanks. Happy New Year. Um, please, I just want to know if you have any link to where we can um, get the certification. Get paid certification. Yeah, please, 
pre certifications. Okay, I think I will drop that in the group. Let me write it down. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, link to free certifications. Okay, I will do that later on today. Okay. Yep. So, okay, so Francis, go ahead with your question. Okay, Daniel, um, you said something about mentorship. Okay. So, if I choose you to be my mentor, uh, is it that I mean, it's personal? I mean, okay. Um, being in the mentorship. Okay, I'll just Bello, I don't know if you can explain how 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 does it look like being in the mentorship? So you can explain that for him so that I won't be the one talking about it. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can go ahead. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, um I'm part of the kind of program and uh Hey, thank you, Bello. Thank you, Bello. So, um, it's uh, what can I call? Cause I'm trying to see a lot of names here. Okay, Amulika, do you have? Can you help me? Can you help him add to what um Bello said? It's another person again. Um, um, sorry, Daniel. I I I'm busy with work, so I didn't really hear what his question was. Okay. He was asking about the mentorship, how the mentorship is like, what to expect, you know, how it has been so far. So I want you to help him. So I don't have to be the one talking about it. I want you to tell him what the mentorship is like so far. Okay, um, for me, Shao, uh, the mentorship is, would I say is similar to what here but it's a lot more detailed for me anyway i get to ask specific specific questions on on issues i am having i'm able to contact daniel for anything so for me it is it's been good it's been tailored to my need and my speed really mm. so daniel tends to give a little bit more attention than maybe what we get in the general group that's just the difference for me Okay. okay, thank you. Um thank you, Amulika. Um is there okay, is that okay, Francis? Okay, go ahead with your question. Okay, um I understand what you said. You said she said it's a bit similar to what we are having here. Right? Okay. Yeah. But I'm saying do we is there any form of um physical meetings? When you get to the entry, you see you asking questions like when you get to the practical, like when you are talking about practical, I think that's basic, that is one of the basics, like that's what's important in the practical. Oh, okay, okay. So basically, um, because in this, in my mentorship, we have people that stay in the US, people that stay in Canada, some stay in different states, so we can't have a physical class right but everything is online so the same way we are having a meeting right now what happens is that i get to share my screen so whatever it is i'm doing you'll see me do it all right so it's as good as a physical class so if i choose to share my screen now you can see the codes i'm writing every single step i'm picking you can see me do it every single step no step is left behind Every single step is being um, shown to you on my screen. So you can be doing that. Maybe you can have your phone 
and be looking at what I'm doing and be doing that on your laptop. But I always advise to see what I'm doing first. Then you can watch the video again and then practice on your own so you can understand. Okay. So physical classes are uh, not really, though I'm looking for a way we can have a meetup probably um, at the end after every three months or something, you know, just one weekend meetup, something where we can just get to meet each other and at least physically. Well, it might not be to write codes, it might be just to hang out. But for the meetings, they are always online so that people that are in Port Harcourt, people that are in Enugu, people that are in um, maybe Abuja, US, Canada, South Africa can get to um, see what we are doing online. So it can be, um, everybody can follow along at the same time, all right? But if you stay close to where I am, definitely if you want to see me, I will just have to make out time, okay? Maybe we could always in the weekend, <laughs> we can meet in the weekend or something like that. But if it's to write our codes, I will share my screen to you guys, then you see what I'm doing. Every single thing I'm doing is as good as we are doing in physical class, just that you are in your own home, maybe probably wearing... You're not wearing any shirts. You're just wearing a shirt. And you're doing whatever it is I'm doing from the comfort of your home. Because to be a data analyst, you might not necessarily go to the company you're working. You can be working from the comfort of your home. So that's the idea of everything. I hope that answers your question, Francis. All right. Okay, so um, do we have... Any other question? Anybody has a question? Anybody? Anybody? Okay, so if we don't have a question, I will just touch, um, discuss what we are meant to do, which is the human resources data sets, the project. So last year, I sent the data set and the problem statement to everyone. Please, if you don't have the data set and the problem statement, reach out to me today so I can send it to you via mail. Okay, I want everybody to have it. And we'll be going fully into it on Wednesday. Okay, like Wednesday, we are going, because we're using only Power BI, so we're going fully into it. All right. And if you don't have the link to download this stuff, and you are not joining us, it's fine. Please reach out to me. Okay, I would send you the link on how to download this software on your laptop. Okay, then, um, all right. So basically we're going into the human resources project and from the problem statement, the company at hand, they're having issues with their staffs because the level of, um, the level of product productivity has dropped. And they want us as data analysts. So we are like um, a contract data analyst staff. They want us to look at the data set and the details for the, of the employees and um, reasons why the, why the possible reasons for an employee to be absent and see what are the pain points, like what are the reasons why there has been a drop in productivity because if you're saying it's because an employee an employee leaves far yes that could be a reason now how can we solve this issue because it's either we arrange for an accommodation for the employee to get closer to work even if we arrange for that accommodation what if the reason why the employee is staying far is because the employee has family to look after Maybe the grandparents are staying closer to the employee. Are we going to move the grandparents closer to work too? I mean, these are stuff we need to look at. So if the employee is staying for one of the possible solutions we could say is that what if we make this employee work remotely? That means they can work from home, right? So how do we look at this with the data set that has been given to us? What other reasons can we come up with? Out of all the reasons that have been given to us, what are the major reasons why employee employees are not being productive at work? Is it because uh, maybe we have a large section of people between age 18 to 25 missing work on Fridays and Mondays? Is it because they are partying 
during the weekend. You know, when you go and party during the weekend, party on Sunday, you are having hangover. You can't come to work on Monday or you might come to work and your level of productivity is very low on Monday, Tuesday. And it affects because what if on Monday, that's when the company needs you to be active. And you can't be active because you finished, you took one bottle of Jameson and you can't even do anything. So that's one of the reasons we need to look at. Okay, if that's the reason people are partying, what, how can we solve that issue? Do we let these people off? Do we tell them that, okay, we don't need your services again? Or do we, um, or let me say, do we put disciplinary measures? So even if we choose to put disciplinary measures, what happens when these people pass it or what happens when they fail them? That means definitely if they should fail disciplinary measures, we tell them that if you come late, we're going to deduct your salary. Okay, please send the um send your email to my WhatsApp. Just send it for my WhatsApp miss, um to my number on WhatsApp as a personal message. Because after this call, I can't pick up any email. So um, what if they fail disciplinary measures? And we tell them if you fail it, we're going to deduct your salary. Do we keep deducting their salary? And I mean, if we keep deducting their salary, we we'll keep we we'll keep paying them something now, and it's affecting the company's finances. We can't be paying someone, even though the person was meant to earn two thousand dollars, and we're saying we are paying you one thousand dollars. At the end of the day, we are paying something. So if twenty employees are having that issue and we're paying one one thousand dollars, that's twenty thousand dollars every month, and at the end of the year, we're paying two hundred and forty thousand dollars. So it affects the finances of the company. Can we keep doing that? Or do we let these employees go? So that is what we as data analysts are meant to do. We're meant to look at how much a reason for being absent affects the company. Okay, so we need to now make a decision or make a recommendation to the board and tell them that, look, this is what we feel you should do. This is what we feel you should not do. And for people working far, this is what we feel that you should do to help them. For people that are overweight, this is what maybe you can put them in a fitness program to help them, you know, cut down their obesity. And during that time, you can let them work remotely. But after three months of or six months of putting them in a fitness plan, you can then move them into um, um, on-site work. Because probably the person that has been obese might just be living behind the company. His house is not even far. But it's too far. He can't move. So that's one of the things to look at. Right? So what if the person cannot move? The person is living behind the company. Eh, let them work remotely. Then six months in a fitness program. Program. If after six months they are not being active in a fitness program, we'll let them go and we'll pay them... Um, health, maybe put them in an insurance program for the remaining six months so they won't see us as a company. So these are things we can look at as a data analyst because there are so many ways to go around it. There are so many recommendations we could make. And during the time for presentations, okay, during the time for presentations, we are going to have someone, a data analyst, an intern from the company. I hope there's no more intern by then. Probably they would have because they're going through performance review. So it's probably not going to be an intern by then, maybe as a full staff, junior data analyst, coming to watch us do our presentation. Okay. So the person will tell you what you're doing wrong and how you can improve. So your corrections don't just come from me. All right. So we can actually um, learn from someone that is in the human resources um, field. So if you are planning to go into human resource, uh, human resource analyst or human resource analysis, you can learn from the person and ask your questions. Okay, so, um, all right. So that's basically what we are going to be doing for this month of January, the first three weeks of January. All right, putting our hands, um, touching or making our hands dirty with this human resource um, project. Then on that third week, we're also I'm also going to be sharing the next project we're going to be working on. Another industry could be the finance industry. We're going to be touching a lot of things, like I said last year, um, doing so many things just to 
make us conversant with different data sets. Then you can look at the one that catches your interest. Then you can look for more data sets to work on that particular project, okay, or that particular industry, right? So that's the idea of this stuff. So does anyone have a question concerning the data set? I'm sure you've looked at it for quite a number of times. If you have any question concerning data set, please go ahead and ask me a question. Bumi, go ahead. So it's not about the data set. Uh, about, I sent you a message on WhatsApp. And since you said you may not have, have time after this call, I'm I just saying that you please respond to me. I'll find a way to respond to me. Oh, okay, I will respond to the message. What I meant was that after this call, anybody sending a message on this chat, like this Google Meet chat, I might not respond to it because it will be lost. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so okay. any message on my WhatsApp, I'll be able to respond to it after this call. Okay. So, um... All right, all right, all right. So do we have any other question, guys? Okay. 